What about this? All it. Nothing in that to worry you, Kester. Yes, but what about that fellow upstairs? Relax. I'll take care of him tonight. I'm taking this thing off tomorrow. You want it for a month. 22 stitches if I find out who socked me. And took the jade lady? Still don't believe me, huh? Well, I'll show you tonight. You go back to the apartment while I take care of that nosy gent upstairs. since Friday. Must be the last weekend. Funny thing about the guy. He drinks all the unfinished drinks. Then I what? Always check on strangers. Well, listen. Beat it. Ten grand in it for you. Enough for a swell funeral. For me. But listen, Rose. Maybe I'm no lady, but I don't want to be missing like the one you want. Ten thousand if you find the jade lady for me. Better scram. Why? The ox is here. Remember, with ten grand you can go places. Not alone. It's all set. Better get ready. Mm -mm. I've been thinking. Never mind thinking. Can't help it. It's a habit of mine. I just had a better offer. If you double-cross me, I'll... I turned it down like I'm turning your deal down, Ox. I want no part of the missing lady. You know too much, baby. No, mm, just enough to want out altogether. I'm checking out. You'll do what you're told and like it. Well, I said. You have a way with women. That's what I like about you. If you want anything to happen to your sister, you're gonna get smart. I'll rough them up and get them started. Then you take over. And don't miss. Ten grand. Maybe you got something there.
Take it easy, pal. Don't like it here, huh? Maybe you prefer the Ritz. Here's how we treat nosy stool pigeons. <laughs> Pleasant dreams, Ox. You too, pal. Give us a chance to sleep. about a light. You better clear out of here while you're still able to. Why? Who do you think you're fooling, Mr. Lamont Cranston? You know me? Sure. So does everyone else down here. So get out and stay out. And, uh, thanks for the light. You going home now, boss? No, I'm going back to that flop house again, but not as myself. They're wise to me. Going back as the shadow? I'm like the police, too easily spotted. This Douglas case is a job for the shadow. The cops won't like it, boss, especially Inspector Cardona. I know the shadow is outside the law, even working for it. Right around the corner. Okay, boss, the coast is clear. to get into Field studio. And then he sneaked around Ann's apartment. And then I tailed him right back here. I don't get it. I think I do. I have to go uptown, so you take care of him. Uptown on business. What business? I ain't talking. Thanks, whoever you are. Stop. Don't follow me. I'll be seeing you later. Looks like I'm being followed. Let's get out of here fast. Okay, but my brakes are terrible. If I hit anything, I hope it's something cheap. But it was exciting. About as exciting as a parachute jump without a parachute. A couple of bloomer girls batty over elevators. I'm going to complain about how they run those things. Who are you going to complain to? Effie and Millie Hobbs bought this building a month ago just so they can race up and down on those elevators. They're a couple of characters. And speaking of characters, you suppose the boys will be glad to see us back? They better be. Especially Shrevy. Oh, uh, no way to talk, Jenny. Oh, yes, it is, Miss Margot. I know Shrevy. That taxi of his slows down for brunettes, stops for blondes, and backs up for redheads. Mr. Cranston's apartment, please, 705. 
Jenny, you and I trust Lamont and Trevi completely. We do? Mm. Since when? Ever since... Oh, Lamont doesn't answer. He must be out, and so is Shrevy. Since uh, when do we trust them? Don't be silly, Jenny. A woman never trusts a man. Keep ringing, operator. Seventh floor in a hurry, please. Race you, Effie. I'll take Mr. Shrevy. Now, girls, no tricks. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Effie. You'll get a pilot's license any day now. You won. Raced you down, Effie. Goody. Hello? We had the most wonderful time, darling, but, oh, I did miss you so much. But, Miss Margot, this is Shrevy. <laughs> Shrevy, would you put Lamont on the phone, please? Here you are, boss. Boss! Gosh, she's gone. Well, go find him. Quiet, there's a murderer. Meanie, meanie. Miney? Mo, hi, Mo. I mean, hello, boss. You see, I found you. Trevi, I see you found someone, too. Hey, she looks like a warm number if she wasn't out cold. Say, is everyone here out cold? No, oh, he's out for keeps. And, Mr. Kester? Trevi. It's okay. Come right in. Hey, boss, you do all right. You really do all right. What's happened to Anne? Oh, she's just out for a while. I mean, she's in, but she's out, too. Tell me, uh, you know who he is? Alfred Kester. Is he dead? Yeah. Who killed him? I... He did. I did? That was you. Gilda, he shot Kester and he was going to murder me. Look, he still has the gun in his hand. That's what you get for being a good Samaritan. Imagine standing me up at the other end of a telephone line. Listen, the boss had never hurt a girl. I smell a rat. I heard the rat. But he was coming right at me. I tell you, the man was dead when I came in here. Well, well. Well, hello, darling. I'm glad to see you back. But I'm busy right now. I... Yes, you must be very busy with two of them. And you too, Shrevy. Where have you been? Well, right here. With these two? With the boss. We even had a chaperone. Look. Oh. <gasps> Where's apartment 704? Right there. But aren't you the police? Let's go. Oh. But you had the gun. Of course he did. What oh, no. gun? Jacobs, look that room over. Shot twice. How come you're here, Cardona? Someone reported a murder here about 20 minutes ago. Of course, I might know there'd be trouble with you around Cranston. Well, anyway, I'm glad you're here. Good evening, Miss Margot, Jenny, Shrevy. Whose apartment is this? It's mine. Name? Ann Walsh. I'm Gilda Marsh. 
I was working for Mr. Field, the artist up in 1004, and came down to see Anne. But these people were here, and Mr. Kester... Kester? He's Alfred Kester. Kester, the curio dealer? Now what happened? He shot him. Lamont, don't you be ridiculous. Now, Miss Walsh, would you please Quiet. explain? Quiet. You see him do it, Miss Walsh? No, I didn't, but he had the gun. He had the gun in his hand when I came in. You've been butting into police affairs for a long time, Cranston. But this time, I think you're stuck. Cardona, you're not accusing... Inspector, don't be silly. Lamont never murdered anyone that I know of. I Save mean... it, Jacobs. Stay here till the medical examiner gets here. All right, folks. We'll continue this at headquarters. Now, why did you shoot Kester? I didn't. Try and prove that when we put Ann Walsh on the stand. She was lying. Why should she? I don't know. You said you never met her before tonight. No, never. And why should she lie about you? That's what I'd like to know. Well, come on, let's get this thing over with. Is that what you said to Kester before you shot him? I didn't shoot him. You had the gun. I told you that I was knocked out, and when I came to, the gun was in my hand. You knew Kester was an art curio dealer. Well, I'd heard of him that he had some strange friends. When did you first meet him? When he was dead. And I didn't kill him. I didn't even know the man. You need an introduction before murdering someone? Well, that's a little more polite. Now about the old clothes that we found in your private taxi cab. I told you about them. You said you wore them to visit a flop house. Yeah, while investigating the James Douglas murder. A case which you have done nothing about yet, Inspector. We're working on it. Why were you at the flop house? Because I had a tip. Someone from there hired a taxi to go to the Douglas home the night that Douglas was murdered. So you're mixed up in two murders. Oh, yeah, but not the way you think. And as I said to you ten times before this month, why don't you find the missing lady? And as I've told you 40 times, no missing woman has been reported. And you're being questioned, not me! If you think you can accuse Lamont of murder, I'll show you you're very well mistaken. Margo. What's this about a murder? I haven't touched her yet. Her? I'm talking about Lamont. Oh, he's in Cardona's office, Commissioner Weston. I'll see Cardona. Good evening, Commissioner. Okay, everybody out. And now you can tell Lamont that we're waiting. You've got a long wait. He's staying. Inspector, this is ridiculous. It's true, even if Cranston is your nephew, Commissioner. It's not true, Uncle. Cardona needs radar even to find his way home. Now look, Cranston. Now you look and listen. You say Lamont had the gun in his hand? Make a paraffin test? He did. On me and two women. Find any powder stains? He didn't. On me or the women. I'm not satisfied with the test. But you... No, no. Leave this to me, Lamont. Now, Inspector, just what did happen? They're keeping you in jail. No, I'll be out in a minute. Do you remember the Jeff Mann case? Yeah, when you had to clear the shadow on a murder rap. Yeah, only this time the shadow has to clear me. And I still have a hunch that the Douglas case is tied up with tonight's murder. You're mixed up in something else. No wonder they're in trouble. Investigating crimes without us along to help them. But look, you have nothing on which to hold him. But look. Nothing but coincidental circumstance. But, well, just because he's your nephew. Inspector. I'm going to release him. You can go, Cranston. Thank you, Uncle. But be on hand when I want you, Chris. And I said when, not if. Thank you, Uncle. Miss Walsh. Why did you accuse Cranston of murder? I saw him with the gun. What did you see when you first came into this room? Alfred Kester's body. Then you screamed? Yes. And fainted? Yes. Then why accuse Cranston? The gun. It was mine. So you were being framed. Yes. What has that to do with the Jade Lady and the diamonds? The Jade Lady? Then you know. Yes. Don't try to leave town, Miss Walsh. I'll be seeing you again soon. Anybody. I'm telling the truth. You've got to believe me. No! Please! Please!
you. You can get hurt sneaking around this way. Sure. And you can too, Ox. Don't try to be as smart as you think you are. I'm after what belongs to me. Oh, no. From now on, it's a case of finders keepers. The lady belongs to me, and I'm getting her tonight. So keep out of my way. Very funny. What are you doing here at this time of the night? I came to see you. I found someone searching your apartment. Who, if it was, got away as I came in. Well, I... I wonder what they were after. I wouldn't know, if you don't. But what are you doing here? I thought you might want to know that Kester was murdered tonight in Anne's apartment. Kester murdered? By whom? The police have arrested a man named Lamont Cranston. Cranston, the fellow who lives in this building? Mm -hmm. But what possible motive could he have to kill Kester? Perhaps we should go down and talk to Anne. No. No, I, I don't want to be involved in any murders. It's open. Good. If she thinks she can accuse Lamont of murder, I'll... We can handle her. Look, her bag. Oh, packing up to leave after accusing Lamont of murder. I'll keep her here, Jenny, if I have to fight her. Me too. Let me have a wallop at her too now and then, huh? Yeah. Maybe she went out there. What's this? I'll bet she went out that way. This is a heavy. Well, there's nothing here. Let's go see what she packed. Well, wait for me. I'm scared. Oh. What's wrong? Where did you get this? Near her body. Whose body? That woman, Miss Walsh. What's everyone out in the hall for? We heard a scream. So did we a moment ago. Oh, no, she couldn't have screamed because she... Was dead when we found her and called the police five minutes ago. Accusing me of two murders in one night. Inspector, I haven't got that much energy. Shut and... up and stay shut. Inspector, there's no use bellowing when we're... Shut up! Now, you see, you got me doing well, it. Well, Cranston riles me, I rile you, you rile me, and I always end up with the worst of it. All right, let's start all over again. I still think that the murder's tie in with the Douglas case. Are you going to start that all over again? But the motive for the three murders is the missing lady. Listen, the Douglas people say that no woman in their family is missing. They're keeping it quiet, hoping to get her back. The trouble with you, Inspector, is you don't know who this particular lady is. How can I find out who's missing when nobody has been kidnapped or disappeared? Cranston, if you don't Inspector. shut up! her, she wasn't kidnapped. She was stolen. Cranston, I'm uh, going to... <laughs> Have a little private talk with you. Uh, do you mind, Commissioner? Not at all. I'm glad to see you're willing to take a hint from Lamont. Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk to him about, Commissioner. A hint. <laughs> Yes? Yeah, I'm giving you the hint, Cranston. Stay out of my hair. I'll pot you with a baseball bat. Oh, well... You get me? Yeah, yeah, I do. But I still think you should find the missing lady. Anything else you want to say? Yeah. I want to say... I want to say... Uh, thanks for the hint, Lamont. Hello, Commissioner. It's nice to see you two cooperating in police work. Yes, it's nice work. I wonder how I'd be as a police inspector. Terrible. You're too much like the one we got. Oh, what am I saying? That's what he does to me. So long, Inspector.
surprise. Oh. How long have you been here? I didn't time myself. They didn't keep you in jail? No thanks to you. Well, I only told the police what I saw, Mr. Cranston. Well, since we're this close, why not call me Lamont? Why, I'd love to. Lamont. Well, now we seem ready for some collective bargaining. Just where do you fit and what's been going on? You don't think I had anything to do with these murders? Why should a golf club head be left at the scene of the murder when the victim, Ann Walsh, died of bullet wounds? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that's all right. I hardly do myself. Well, I have to go. Oh, not without telling me why you're here and what you're looking for. Oh, are you really interested? Definitely. I'm glad. It's always so much easier to tell my troubles to a man. Especially when we're alone. Good. Now tell me, what were you looking for? I thought I left a compact here. In that desk? You sure you weren't looking for her? You mean Anne? No. No, I mean the Jade Lady. That got a raise out of your eyebrows, didn't it? Do you mind if I smoke? No, no, not at all. I. Would you like one? No, thank you. Oh. Oh. Allow me. fully recovered from meeting you yet. You know, I'm fond of you. Mm -hmm. You have a terrifically streamlined way of showing it. Oh, so you've got the keys to my apartment, too, huh? You, uh, forgot your cigarettes. I'll be seeing you. Don't catch me twice like that, lady. Hey, you're no lady. Get him up. Now look, this is my private apartment, not a public. Keep your home. claws up. Where did she go? Oh, so you do know about her? Are you kidding? Don't move. Don't move. Do you uh, mind if I breathe? You're not funny, Cranston. Oh, so you know who I am? Well, that's. Too... Up, 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 and shut up. I'm searching this place. It looks like you've been doing a pretty good job of it already. Yeah, and I'm going to find that jade lady. Turn around. Huh. Someone else out for a change. Quite a wallop. Better than packing a gun. Now, who are you? Terry Blake. How about a deal, Cranston? About what? A missing lady. But I don't have her. And you know where she is. 
might have an idea. I think you have. So I'll make a deal with you. You give me the lady and I'll give you $15,000. Uh -uh. I can't go a cent higher than 20,000 cash. That's nothing to sneeze at. What would you do with the missing lady? Return her to her family. What about the police? You can't make deals with cops. Look, you give me the lady and I'll give you 20,000. I'm interested. Well, good. I'll see you at Harry's place. Yeah, you know where it is. About my stuff. My, uh, gun. Now I'm searching the place. Oh, no, you're not. You pull a gun and I'll... I don't think you will. I just took these from your gun. <laughs> I knew you were smart. That's why I offered you a deal. Seeing you. I'm sure you will. See you later, boss. I'm driving to the jail. See if they'll let you out. They did. Oh, they did? How long have you been here? Oh, a couple hours, playing solitaire. And I lost $407,000. I'm out here being shoved around, and you playing solitaire? <laughs> My pal. Oh, boss! Who shoved you around, boss? Quiet. I'm looking for a missing lady and a girl. Oh, one for each of us, huh? Did you hear that? I did. I ain't haunted. Then I heard Miss Margo and Jenny coming after us. Well, I want to see another girl first. Come in. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Field. It's time for a rest. Cranston, isn't it? Yes, that's right. You wish to see me? I wanted to talk to Gilda. You've met before? Oh, of course. She told me about last night. And uh, we met a second time. Oh, I'm sorry. But you did upset me. Oh, no. You upset me. Plenty. Did it hurt? Let me kiss it and make it better. Oh, you kiss him and he'll feel worse. And so will you. Oh. I'm John Field. Oh, and I'm Margot Lane. Jenny Delaney. Oh, and you're an artist, too. You do lovely work. Yes, right on the beam. You two make a lovely picture. You see, he has a true artist's eye, Jenny. He do. He does. Perhaps you will let me uh, pose you sometime soon. Oh, my. Who's that in the picture? Grandfather. Oh. Oh, and what's this? It's lovely. I use it for still life paintings. Oh, it's sealed. What's in it? Grandfather. Oh, Grandfather. Yes. Uh, he died, and uh, his ashes are in the urn. Oh! Uh, <laughs> Don't want it? <laughs> That's the way everybody acts when they learn they're holding John's grandfather. Oh, what a loud laugh you had, Grandmother. So you found the missing lady. He did? As if you didn't know. What missing lady? Her. I think we'd better go. Come on, Margot. Perhaps you two will return uh, real soon. Oh, thank you. Got an idea. Stall the girls. Okay, boss. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, girls. Goodbye, dearie. Well, where'd he go? Oh, 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 the boss. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, he went. He went that way. <laughs> See what I mean? No. Neither do I. Well, don't stand there. Go find him. Oh, that that's a good idea. You stay right here. I'll go find him. You two wouldn't know anything about it. You must remember. Oh, Millie, he must mean. That's the night, Hafe. What night? When I had a passenger and Millie didn't. My passenger got off at the seventh floor. So up to Daisy and I won the race, and down to Daisy and I lost. <laughs> That's the night that Kester was killed. Did your passenger enter Miss Walsh's apartment before Miss Walsh did? You sure? Oh, yes, we peaked. We always speak. He must be looking for... The missing lady. You know about her? You know where she is? She's in this building. Let's see. It was exactly six... Years ago when she disappeared. Six years ago? 
Yes, she just walked out. And only came back today with a brand new husband. Well, that did it, girls. You can let me out now. Oh, go on. Do you really, Shrevy? Oh, I'll bet you tell that to all the girls. But you better not let me catch you telling them. Has he found Lamont yet? Stop talking so much and put Mr. Lamont on the phone. But he ain't back yet. He's looking for more girls. <laughs> oh, no, not without me. I mean, just a second. Everything all right, boss? Okay. The mystery's beginning to unravel. Now, we're going out tonight, and don't let the girls know. Well, where are we going? We're going to Harry's place on the east side, then to the flop house. Oh, looking for the missing lady. Yeah, I think I know what's happened to her. Tonight, we're going to make sure. Oh, so he's looking for still another girl, is he? Well, we'll be there tonight, Jenny, too. Hmm, but that's a tough neighborhood. When we arrive there, we'll look and act as tough as anybody else at that place. going in, too, if I can ever learn to walk the way you showed me. Well, the Bowery bounce is easy. Well, I've never bounced like that before. You just never lived in the right neighborhood, that's all. Try it. Hello. Hello, Mike. Say, where are them two girls? They're on their way. Why, they must be riding them two horses. I've been on a two-horse parlay that never came in. Mustard plaster for my back. See what you mean. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Drunks with derbies. Hmm. Well, it's about time you two got here. It is? I mean, it is? If you're the two best looking dishes Mike could send me, he's sure slipping. Oh, he is, is he? Oh. Yeah. Well, you're here, so you might go to work. On the other side of the bar, there are two gents from uptown, see? And remember, you get 10% of all the water they spend. Not them. You see, they're... Oh, they're police. I mean, they're, they're coppers. Huh? Say, thanks for the tip. You babes been around, huh? Match. What the hell? I'm a brunette, and she's a blonde. Oh, you mean your wife dyed her hair? No, she just died, and then I married a blonde. <laughs> That's why you remind me of her, and you remind me of her, too. You, you, know, you, know, you know why I'm here? My wife intercepted the pass I made as a waitress, and I've been afraid to go home ever since. You know? This is atomic bomb that's causing all this trouble. <laughs> You don't have to stand in line. They're right around the corner. All you want, three bucks a pair. Well, cut me in. Make it a dozen. Okay, Rose, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for the tip, Maine. The other woman's leaving, boss. You stick here. So you're back again. Yeah. I want to talk to you. Suit yourself. About the missing lady. I don't know anything about anything. So you've forgotten about the party at John Fields' studio. Fields' guests were Ox, Gilda Marsh, Kester, Ann Walsh, and you. Who told you? A couple of birds by the name of Effie and Millie. So what? Someone from that party killed Douglas, stole the lady, and lost her again the same night after being hit on the head. Look. 
Even if you don't, I want to stay out of trouble. You can't, Rose, because you know who got the Jade Lady. I never remember names. The police won't forget yours. They'll charge you and Ox with murder. Have you finished dreaming? It's your nightmare, not mine. You look like a right guy, Cranston. So why don't you clear out of here? Mm -hmm. I never start anything I can't finish. So will you come along and we'll both talk to Ox? You're asking for trouble. Maybe I can save you a lot of it. Shall we go? Well, let me make sure that we see Ox alone. You come up in a few minutes. But don't say I didn't warn you. Mr. Blake again. Yeah. You haven't forgotten our deal. No, no, I intend to take care of you. That wouldn't be a threat. Not at all. Just a promise. Mind her, it's happening to you. You don't have to live down here. I do. Nice work. Bring the sucker up here. Get moving, pigeon. Go on, go on. to me, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but not this way. You're too particular, chum. Boy, I'll hold it. Ox, you said you'd only talk to him. Talk, talk. That's all you want to do. And you do it too much. No, oh, wait a minute, Ox. Get out. You're a well-behaved thug. He doesn't like my manners. Yeah. Get him a chair, Mike. Sit down. He said sit down, not lay down. I'm sitting. Pick up that chair and sit down. Now, chum, what makes my business your business? Stay down there. You try getting up and... Here's your hat. Your hat. Ox, why didn't you show up after Ann Walsh died? What do you know about that? She was your wife. When a wife is murdered, police always look for the husband. <laughs> Two against one. You thugs never give anyone an even break, do you? My handkerchief wasn't in the laundry, I'd bust out crying. Yeah, well, you'll cry all right when they get you for the murder of Kester Douglas and your wife. So, you're a smart copper. You fooled me, chum. <laughs> Fooling you doesn't make me very smart. Now, why don't you keep your hat on? You're sore because you lost the Jade Lady, aren't you? What do you know about that? I know that you stole her. Then lost her again after getting hit on the head with a golf stick. You're too smart, Shem. Pick up your hat. Oh. You think you're not going to let us out of here? Well, you're crazy. We're not going to stay here all day, you big old you. You Neil make your too much room. noise. I didn't say anything. It was the elevator, and you let us out of here. I give up. Come on. Oh, now you're going to try to take my wives away, huh? Your witch? If this is what you call a new technique, get out! You're divorced. <laughs>
Listen, if you keep us... Oh, no. No. It can't be. No, but I'm afraid it is. What are you doing down here? That's what I was going to ask you. We're looking for a flop house. The one Cranston talked about. Oh, that's right over here. He's all yours, Ox. This is it, Inspector. Hey, boss, what happened to you? Oh, all right, boss. Huh? You let's cut. Oh, baby. Cranston, you look awful. I feel worse. Why are you here? Want to pick up the ox? He's Ann Walsh's husband. What happened to you? The missing lady. A woman did this to you? Will you stop talking about a missing lady, especially when there's no woman missing? It's a lady. I'll show her to you. I'll have her in my apartment tomorrow night. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. Everything's all right now. What do you mean, everything's all right now? You heard him. Everything's all right now. I mean it, Cranston. If you don't talk sense... I have been. The motive for the murders is a missing lady. Stop talking about her. If any more women get in this case, I'll need a complete new firing system and a new nervous system. Stop pounding, Inspector. It's my desk. Now, look, if you'll do as I suggest, this whole case... Shut up, Cranston! Inspector! Buddy! Okay, Commissioner, you take over. Now, Lamont, why should we have these people you named at Field Studio tonight? To find the missing lady. There is no miss... There's no lady missing from the Douglas family. Oh, yes, there is, Uncle. Her name is Kauai. Koa? No member of the Douglas family has such a name. Yes, she's about 700 years now old. Now, see here, Lamont. She stands about a foot high and is sort of a pale green. If you don't talk sense, I'll be there tonight and meet her. Oh, the Tri-State Insurance Company will tell you all about her, too. The what? The Tri-State Insurance Company. Goes to show you how far you can get with that nephew of yours. Why, he don't know his... Hello, Tri-State? Police Department here. You know anything about a lady in the Douglas case about uh, 700 years old? Uh, she's a foot high, small for her age. Named uh, Co... Co something. Huh? Huh? Oh, well. The missing lady's a jade statue worth a quarter of a million dollars stolen from the Douglas place. Tri-State's had a detective on it for nearly a month. Why don't you find out these things, Inspector? Commissioner, that's what I keep asking myself. No more upsy donsies for me. I had too many last night. In an elevator? No, I had a Nile seat at the movies. But your party is waiting for you upstairs. It's bad enough to snap a man up and down in that thing without yelling, Geronimo! But Mr. Lamont said to give you the works. Oh, he did, huh? Where's Field Studio? Where are you two going? With you, because Lamont said we should. Those two sisters are dizzier than the rides they give you in their elevators. Well, where's Cranston? Waiting for the last guest. We're alone now, Ox.
You see what happens when your nephew takes charge? How long do we have to wait? After all, Commissioner. Prop him up. Now listen, Cranston. Now listen, Cranston, you... Rose, you remember what I told you about starting things? You said that you always finish them. This is the finish. Now listen. I'm tired of listening. Now it's your turn to try it. And you'll hear plenty. Do you remember a party that took place in this room about five weeks ago? Yes, you said that a couple of birds, you and your girlfriends, well, Kester and Ann Walsh were here with you, Gilda, Ox, and Field. Kester was an art curio critic with a police racket. And Kester said that he night... He said that he'd pay plenty for the Jade Lady. Oh. Yes? Well, Kester did say that. Keep your seat, chum. You made a deal with Kester and murdered Douglas and stole the Jade Lady. You're crazy. Oh, no, no, Ox. We went to the flop house. We picked up your pal, Mike. He talked plenty. This is what hit you on the head, Ox, after you lost what you'd stolen. You hit me. You've got the Jade Lady. You're the one who... Uh, this is Exhibit A. Do you remember when I told you that the missing lady was the motive for three murders? Kester knew who stole the Jade Lady, and he was killed. Because she was frightened and ready to talk, Ann Walsh was shot. Where is this jade lady? Killer's got it. No, I have. This may be John Fields' grandfather, but this isn't. The jade lady. Uh, was I jealous of her? Me too. She must be some dish to have so many people running after her. Blake, I told you I'd take care of you. This covers my end of the deal. Here. $20,000. For the police fund from the Tri-State Insurance Company. Blake is their representative. Insurance detective. Blake, if you insurance detectives... Inspector, $20,000 for the police fund. Oh, yeah, yeah. Book the ox. Only for theft. And the Douglas murder. Well, it was a book fields for... Only for stealing the statue from Ox. Who killed Ann Walsh? Ann Kester. Rose? Oh, she's the one. Now, the only mistake she made was holding my hands a little bit too long. She what? I'm sorry about that, Lamont. I believe you are, Rose. Goodbye. Huh? Goodbye? Ann Walsh was my sister. That's why I was mixed up in... Well, if I never see you again, that doesn't mean I'll ever forget you. But who killed Ann Walsh? Ann Kester. Certain people in this case knew too much to be entirely innocent. I was told that someone entered Ann Walsh's apartment right behind Kester. So only that person could be the murderer. Who was it? Her. She's got a gun. Yes. That's what she used to hit me with. Twice. And then shoot Ann Walsh. What'd she use this for? That hit Ox. And she's left that in Ann Walsh's apartment, hoping to frame Field. Then she tried to frame me for the Kester murder. Well, the case is yours, Inspector. But don't ever accuse me of murder again. I don't like it. Oh, uh, congratulations. Congratulations! <laughs> or what? That's what I keep asking myself. Mm -hmm.